2021, they came out with an olive collection. That was a wonderful collection. It had two fountain pens, a ballpoint, and a roller ball pen, and a 30 milliliter bottle of ink. Their subsequent um, collectible edition. Hi, this is Kai from Kikai Craft, and today is quite a special unboxing because I am going to share with you the Monteverde USA Ritma Special Annual Collectible Edition for 2024. I am so, so, so glad to have been gifted with this set by Monteverde and the pen and ink challenge if you haven't joined that go and join that i am going to put a link to that instagram account in the description and maybe somewhere here i'll show you how it looks anyway i joined these challenges they're a whole lot of fun and as i joined one of them i was gifted with this beautiful set so this is their 2024 set it is in espresso Ooh, that was just wonderful it's a three plus two piece set and you'll see in a bit why it's called three plus two. Now, this is their fourth uh, collectible edition. In 2021, they came out with an olive collection. That was a wonderful collection. It had two fountain pens, a ballpoint and a roller ball pen and a 30 milliliter bottle of ink. Their subsequent um, collectible editions in the set form had a roller ball refill, if I'm not mistaken. It's like a gel refill for the uh, ballpoint, but we'll get to that later. So this is the 2024, 2021 was the olive with the two fountain pens. And then there was a 2022, which had carbon fiber material on it. And last year for 2023, it was the orange pen set with the beautiful Mandarin orange ink. And this year, it is the espresso set. Ta-da! Okay, so when you get the box, when you get the pen set, it'll look like this. Beautiful, beautiful box. Um, it has these coffee beans in some sort of glossy texture and the rest of the box in a matte sort of texture. Then when you go to the back, because that's where you should start, you'll see the beautiful um photograph of a coffee cup and then you'll see all those coffee beans sort of uh, flying all around and it connects all the way to the design right on top of the box now once you're done marveling ooh, oh this part also tells you which nib you'll get so uh the nib that they sent me is the omniflex which is wonderful because i love the flex nibs. Now, just to let you know, OmniFlex is not exactly a flex nib. It's like a little bouncy sort of nib, but it definitely provides a lot of line variation. All right, so when you pull this out, okay, it requires a little bit of skill. When you pull this out, you'll see the main box. Okay, and this box, it's quite a simple box. It has this black matte uh, finish to it and it has Monteverde USA, a world of luxury and innovation in uh, embossed in silver or is this stamped in silver. Then when you slip this off, you will find literature. So it talks a little bit about what the pen is, what design it has. So it has a Ritma design, which is a very streamlined, minimalistic sort of design. And it'll tell you that the aluminum barrel is anodized and it's treated with a matte finish. And since the color is like espresso, it really creates this beautiful matte satiny sort of finish to it, which you'll see in a bit. Um, it has a magnetic seal on the cap of especially for its roller ball and its fountain pen because its ballpoint does not have a cap which is a wonderful thing and you'll see why in a bit and it tells you what the set includes it has a ballpoint pen a fountain pen a roller ball pen 30 milliliter ink bottle mm, so generous and 
a gel refill to convert the ballpoint pen to a capless roller ball pen. Then it just talks to you or tells you about um, the different uh, ways you can get parts of this collection, especially with the different designs, oh, sorry, nib sizes. And it also tells you how to refill your pen. So here it talks about how to refill your ballpoint. And it's quite clear with illustrations and diagrams. And here it talks to you about how to refill your roller ball, your fountain pen, how to put in a cartridge, and how to convert your um, ballpoint into a capless gel roller ball. And it provides you with that refill. So it's a very, very good set. Once you are done looking through that, you'll see this very protective sort of foam cover and then you'll see the collection. Isn't that so pretty? Look at the color. It is like a reddish brown with gunmetal right there. Okay, so we're gonna take it out, take the pens out so we can have a good look. So this is the fountain pen, if I'm not mistaken. I've cleaned up the fountain pen because we're gonna fill it in. And there is that black, beautiful Omniflex. Look at that, it's so pretty. Okay, and as mentioned, it should have a magnetic. Ah, nice. On top, so you don't need to screw it off. You don't need to like pull it off so much. It's really quite a nice, satisfying click and pull. Okay, again, nice. So that is our fountain pen. Then we have the roller ball. So the roller ball looks like the fountain pen. Really does. Okay, so you could be confused. Okay, and again, it has that magnetic cap here and you can post it too. Nice and magnetic. And of course it has a roller ball cartridge in. Let's put that there. And then we have the ball pen. And the ball pen is capless. Oh, sorry, we're supposed to twist it like that. Nice, and you can refill this ballpoint with this gel refill that they have also provided. Wow, it's just like a wonderful set that you can really play with. Now, apart from that refill, they also will provide you with a very wonderful choice of ink color. It is the brown sugar ink. So, you know, you get it, you have your espresso with brown sugar. Witty, that is witty. Okay, and then you have, of course, a card that just tells you what the different finishes of the Omniflex nibs are. So you have your black, you have your rose gold, chrome, and your 14 karat gold. This one, as you saw, has the black finish. And on this side, it has a little bit of literature on how to use the Omniflex nib. So here it says it's an ultra smooth flex nib. Um, it does have a good line variation to it. Um, and then it just encourages you to use the ink converter. Um, and then it has, it talks a little bit about what you should do. You should apply pressure, but it should be a gentle pressure. If you are a flex nib user, you know how to control your hand when it comes to putting in that pressure. And if you haven't tried flex nibs before, um, Omniflexes are a good place to start. Just remember not to really push hard. I'll show you in a bit what that means. Okay, and then you have your false bottom, but there's really nothing underneath it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this uh, part, this protective foam, kind of looks a, li a little like leathery, but it's also like more like hard rubber, actually. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Well, first off, we'll do a very quick uh, size comparison, especially focusing on the fountain pen. And then we will go ahead and uh, fill it in with some ink and do a writing sample. All right, a quick 
size comparison we are really just going to focus on the length because yes of course so i'm not going to do like width or anything like that okay i miss uh checked the height mm, i think i don't know i think maybe this one goes here yep okay so these are some of the uh, more accessible pens um, and long pens that we can compare the Ritma to. So we have the Mont Blanc Writer's Edition, the Twisby Diamond 580. We have the Lamy. We have a Faber-Castell Ambition. We have a Platinum 3776 Wagner, the Sailor Pro Gear, and of course the Caveco. So where does this slide this is the fountain pen okay just wanted to make sure all right so i would think it'll be taller than your sailor pro gear and okay so it is i think about the same height maybe or a little taller than your platinum 3776 so that's where it is it is a little bit shorter then your Faber-Castell Ambition and all of these. Okay, now uncapped. Let's go ahead and uncap and just see how they compare. And I'm going to post this maybe just so you see too how it compares uh, when you have it um, ready for writing. Okay, so when you have them uncapped or posted, as in the case of your Caveco, um, you will see that it is much longer than your Faber-Castell, your Platinum, and your Sailor Pro Gear, all unposted, um, or all not posted. And it is roughly the same length as your, um, I think your Diamond 580. Yeah, roughly the same length as your Diamond 580. Hmm. Okay, and it is maybe the same length as a posted Caveco Sport. Let's just go ahead and try. Yes, a little bit longer than your Caveco Sport posted. Okay, so that's how it looks lengthwise. Now just... I mean, you'll see this in the website, but just so you see, it's about 13 centimeters long, uncapped and capped, not too much longer, um, a little bit shy of uh, just a tiny bit, like a smidge over 13 and a half. Okay, so we're just going to cap all of these up. We're going to ink it, then we're going to go for a writing sample. Okay, let's put this there and let's put everything else aside. Okay, let's have a general look, a quick look at the pens themselves, of course, cat hair. So with the focus on the fountain pen, you will see that it has this aluminum body with this nice anodized finish. It's very nice, really. Okay, it has like some sort of glow coming from it. Then you have the trim. The trim is in gunmetal. Okay, the light just went a little wonky where I am. There is nothing on the top finial. It's a little bit concave. Okay, on the cap though, it has Monteverde USA Ritma Special Edition written on it. On the bottom finial, again, it's in gunmetal finish and there is uh, no other design to it. It's quite robust. Then when you, oh sorry, and of course you have your clip with that nice little oval um, cutout and it is quite a tight clip. Like you need a little bit of force to get that to open. So that could be a good thing. That could be a not very good thing depending on your use of the cap. Again, magnetic closure, 
once you have it off, you have this um, gunmetal finish on the section. There is a bit of a step up, step down, don't know what you call that on it, but it is comfortable. It is thick enough. I like it in the hand. There's nothing that stops your fingers from moving. There's no lip uh, or upturned lip to it to sort of hold it in place. But because of the finish, your fingers have a good grip on it. Then of course you have that OmniFlex nib. I'm gonna scoot you in. Okay, so of course you have that OmniFlex nib. It has a little bit of scroll work there. It has OmniFlex written on it. Okay, it has these cuts on the side and it has the plastic feed. Okay, overall a good looking pen. We are going to be inking this up, but we're just gonna put it on the side just for a second, just to have a quick look at the other pens in the set. So the roller ball has basically the same look as your fountain pen. Your top finial is pretty blank and so is that bottom finial. Okay, then you have Monteverde USA Ritma Special Edition on it too. And you have that oblong cutout on the cap. Um, the, on the clip, I mean, the clip is as tight on the roller ball as it is on the fountain pen. And it, of course, it has that anodized uh, finish to the body as well. Now, when you pull that cap off, again, it is a magnetized, magnetic <laughs> uh, closure. You have the gunmetal finish and you have your uh, roller ball right there okay i want to try how i'm just gonna have a quick look to see how it writes with my i'm gonna have some paper here my very reliable paper Oof. okay it writes really nice and it feels good to write with too very smooth wow very very smooth Hmm, that was a good experience. Then you have your ball pen. So the ball pen is a twist uh, pen. Um, again, nothing on this part. You have the Monteverde Ritma Special Edition. One thing I will say though is that the finish is like some fingerprint magnet. It just sticks to it. The clip is quite tight again. A little looser though than the roller ball and the fountain pen. And then this also feels nice and snug. And let's go ahead and write with the ball pen. Okay, the ball pen writes like a ball pen. Thinner lines and not as striking as these. This is like beautiful. And you can convert this into a roller ball simply by changing the refill which they have also provided wow and how do you do that uh, i'm not sure if i'm <laughs> confident enough let's see um it says that we should like unscrew this and oh okay and you have it right there and there's a spring inside and all of that i don't know oh yes there is a spring inside and all you have to do is change this into this hmm. i've never needed to to do this so this is my first time so i hope i did that right let's go ahead and see if i did that right to do oh okay i did since I am confident, let's see how the roller ball looks like inside. Now that I've built a little bit of confidence, let's unscrew this and see what's inside this. Oh, oh, it actually says roller ball medium. Hmm. I've never reviewed a roller ball before. So I don't really know all these parts. This one though says it is a 
uh, ceramic gel fine. So this is a medium and this is a fine in gel and this one is a medium in roller ball. Okay, let's put it back in. There we go. And magnetic. Nice. And again, it's like, it's a magnet really for fingerprints. Okay, so we're gonna ink this up and then we will have a writing sample with it. Okay, so that was quite interesting. I don't know if you noticed, but in the converter, there was an agitator, which is like this tiny transparent uh, ball in this case. And so that is supposed to help with ink flow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Maruman paper. We're just going to look at the line widths using this. And then we are going to do for, we're gonna go for a full uh, writing experience on some other paper. Okay, so with the Maruman, I use Maruman for like my personal fountain pen encyclopedia. So maybe let's write somewhere here. Oof, I have never used this. Let me just scoot you in. Again, apologies for the light. It has changed again where I am. Okay, it might change back into a warmer tone in a little while, so don't be surprised. Okay, let's go ahead and write what it is. Oof, it's a very dark brown ink. So this is the nib, and it is an Omniflex. If I'm not mistaken, it is stainless steel. So let's go ahead and write that in. Oh, it's quite nice, actually. Very good, even lines. This is no pressure, by the way. So stainless steel. And let's go ahead and write that it is an Omniflex nib. Ah, there we go. The light has just changed yet again. It's the rainy season in Jakarta. And that means it's also extra cloudy. Okay, let's go ahead and try with no pressure. This is how it looks. Okay, again, no pressure. There's some skipping, but that's okay. We just inked it up. So I think it needs time to go through the feed and all of that. And now let's try exciting part, which is with pressure. There we go. So when you put in some pressure, don't like go all gung-ho onto it. Just exert enough to see some line variation. And plus this is quite a wet ink. All right, so that's how that looks. No pressure right there and some pressure right there. There is quite a bit of line variation. The ink color is wonderful. It's a very nice brown. Again, it's called um, Monteverde Brown Sugar Ink and it came with the set. Okay, now we're going to go and try this. I'm gonna scoot you just a little bit out. Try this with a Leuchtturm paper which is basically where I put a lot of my quotations and uh, whenever I want to play with my pens and my inks. And since this is a coffee themed set, of course it's appropriate we use a coffee quotation on this. So come and join me as I write with it. Okay. So 
very thick ink, I have to say. Very nice and wet on the paper. Now we're going to put in some pressure. This particular Omniflex I have just has the tiniest difference in line pressure. I found that after using so many Omniflex nibs by so many, I think this is the fifth one that I've tried, there has been some sort of uh, inconsistency in its snapback. So snapback is the uh, tines, that's what you call those two separate pieces, ability to sort of go back to a fine line after you have put some pressure to it. So this one, hmm, okay, the snap back on this one is not as quick. As you can see, it it is like thicker in a lot of places, especially in the downstroke. Um, but it doesn't go, it doesn't really go into like a nice thinner line once you move to the next um, letter or the next stroke. And on this paper, you can see that this ink feathers a bit you can see it has like, it's like sort of spreading out. Okay, sometimes it, like the same ink can behave so differently on other pieces of paper because as a fountain pen user, you must remember that your pen, paper, and nib um, interactions will vary. And so on this paper, this ink tended to like feather quite a bit. Okay, we're worried. We renders many foolish people temporarily capable. I have to say maybe it's also because the ink is quite um, a wet ink. It's a lovely wet brown ink. Okay, this is me ex like exerting pressure onto the nib. Okay, we're going to go and see if it feathers when we don't put in pressure. So this one is no pressure. It's just the nib gliding over the paper. So was it because I was exerting a lot of pressure? Was that why it was feathering so much? We'll see in a bit. So this one, let's just accredit the person. Is it a credit or credit the person? A credit sounds like it's something you would use for making sure things were verified and all that. Okay. All right, there we go. And then again. Nice. Well, 
I think that's it. I think it's because I was putting in quite a bit of pressure when I was working with that uh, flex on the OmniFlex that you see here. But here, I don't know, is it too early to tell? There is some feathering there. But it's like only if you're super nitpicking, at least at this point. Here though, it is spreading a bit. My apologies for that sound. Our neighbors are also, I don't know, renovating something or putting something together. So there's a lot of like light fluctuation and sound uh, fluctuation or distortion or whatever you want to call it. But I really just wanted to put this video together because I wanted to share this whole experience with you. And now everything is happening all at once. Okay, so what are my thoughts about this fountain pen? Well, first of all, it's a beautiful set. I mean, look at that. The color is nice. The finish is wonderful. And they just look so good together. Look at how it glows in the light. It's it's a wonderful finish. Um, for the gunmetal part, the color is wonderful. It really adds to this sort of muted look to the whole collection. Um, but it is quite a fingerprint magnet. So if you're the type who does not like to have fingerprints on your finishes, well, you'll just have to rub them uh, when you're done so they won't show the next time you use it. Or you should have some sort of a little piece of cloth to sort of wipe them with every time you use them. Okay, so if you're that type. I do like the magnetic cap. I like that it's magnetic here and it's nice. You don't feel like you're scratching the section and I like that it's magnetic here because then you're sure to not lose your cap. And it's such a streamlined finish. See, it's like seamless. And so it, it, it it's really nice and posted, it feels comfortable as well. Um, I like the black choice of finish on the Omniflex. That was very, very, uh, like it really matches the whole look of the uh, pen. And I also thought that it was very nice of them to include brown sugar ink. Cause really it was, it just really made an impression on me. So that was cool. Um, for the Omniflex itself, the one that this came with, um, you can see that it is quite a thick downstroke and it's not pressure, unpressured line width. Uh, was different, but not so very different from when you don't apply pressure. So I hope that eventually the OmniFlex can become really one of those super nice flex nibs that just snaps back into like a finer line. But as a uh, pen that you can use for like notes and to send letters and correspondence and you want them in thick broad uh, strokes with some variation in line this would be a perfect choice for you the color of the ink itself is wonderful it does bring to mind coffee even if it is brown sugar i like the dark brown that is almost like it's a kind of brown that leans towards a red rather than say a green which i've seen in some so i like how that uh, looks on paper as well this might not be the best paper for this this is a Leutsch term but if you remember and let me take it out for you on maruman it did not feather at all so again your nib your paper and your ink um, put together really contribute to the writing experience. So here it feathered, here it did not. It was wonderful. Um, and here, as you can see, the although here when you when I flexed it, there was some feathering though. Okay, so it, it's a very wet ink, so I'm not very surprised. Overall, it's a wonderful set. And if you're thinking of gifting someone with a Monteverde experience, I think this one is one of the best sets color-wise that you can find. I mean, the others look good too, of course, but if your recipient is someone who loves coffee, then this is just a wonderful kit to give them. 
Plus, as you saw earlier, the roller ball experience is just wonderful on this set. Okay, so thank you again, Monteverde, for sending this to me. And thank you very much, Pen and Ink Challenge. If you haven't joined any of the challenges from Pen and Ink Challenge, do join. It's such a fun experience. It makes you use your inks. It makes you use your pens. And it just ignites creativity. And the community there is just wonderful. All right, so I hope to see you at Pen and Ink Challenge. And uh, if you do get, when you do get yourself a set of the espresso, come and tag me because I want to see how you use it, how you write with it. And if you're into OmniFlex and you have tips on how to make that line variation um, much more pronounced, I really, really would like to hear what your tips are. Um, again, Thank you for joining me today. This is Kai from Kikai Crafts. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day or a restful evening. Bye everyone.